Hi, my name is Brennan Galley, and I'm the product specialist for Denon DJ Canada. What I do is I travel around the country and I show really innovative gear to people that work in music stores and customers that are visiting it. This is a video follow-up to that, just to sort of reinforce what we talked about in the shop. Today I'm looking at the Denon DJ SC5000, and this video is going to cover how the different screen options work. With the screen, if I want to zoom in, I have the ability just to pinch like I would on my iPad or my tablet. And I can also do the same by doing my select load right here. I'm going to go to my view window and I'm going to take a look at everything in here. So on this particular USB thumb drive, I haven't set up crates, um, but I do have some playlists that are in there. So here's all my different options I've already imported over. Um, if I go here, this is my prepare deck. So if I'm looking at everything, and I want to prepare a track, um, what I'll do is I'll find whichever track I want. Let's go and say I want to do pump up the volume. And so if I wanted to load that onto my deck, I would swipe it to the right. If I want to prepare it for that bin, I swipe it to the left. And now when I take a look at this bin, I'll see pump up the volume after that siren laser track that I have set up. Um, I then have my different folders, but there's nothing within the folder level again on this USB. But if I set up things with folders and that's how my content was, this is how I'd navigate. Maybe that'd be more if I had like content from a record box file um, or I just had a USB thumb drive that was just like files grabbed from it. With mine, I prepared it using the Engine Prime software that comes with the SC5000. I did that because then if I have a bunch of Serato tracks or um, you know, what have you, then all of the cue points, all of the work that I've done on that, um, is just drag and dropped onto my thumb drive. So I don't have the need to rework everything that's in my collection. Like I sort of mentioned earlier as well, record box is now supported, um, as is Serato DJ. So I can use it with, um, that third party software and just go directly into it. All of the content with all of the cues and metadata will be known. Um, or if I'm already working in a software environment, this can now control software. So I can either go directly from just a thumb drive with content, an SD card with content, Engine Prime with everything organized, Record Box with everything organized, or directly into the computer. So it's become really the most flexible piece of gear that's out there right now. If I hold down this View button for a moment, I'm going to get into my Preferences and my Utility tab. So right now I'm grabbing, it says SC5000 front, and it's telling me where it's going to put the Q position. So it's either going to do the start from the Q position or the physical start. I like doing Q because sometimes I'll set that Q in different positions, and so I like it to remember where it is. For my... Um, for my my speed control uh, or my pitch control here, I have the ability to set where the default is. I have it set to plus or minus eight, but I can go up to plus or minus 50. If I wanted to, as I showed in the other videos, I can go up as high as 100, but I would do that by going shift range. And this is just going to have where it will be set up automatically for me. Below that, I have sync mode. So when I'm syncing from one deck to the other using my sync button, this will tell it either it'll go for the bar, the beat, or the tempo. Below that, I have my Q loop quantization. So this is going to be where my loops will quantize to. And again, I have that ability to set it up here. I have just on the one bar right now. And pause hot cue behavior. Um, I can either have it set up to be a trigger. So I push the button. It starts playing the track all the way through. Or I can have it through momentary. So I hold it down. And when I release, it's going to stop playing back that track. And if I do my position like that, then I'd use my play to play through. I would just get started, play. Or the opposite, of course, would be to do trigger, one button push, and it's doing both of those actions. I have my smart loop, so whether or not it will be able to apply the smart loops, I'd like to set my own. Um, and then time format, so how I'm reading back the time. I can also set when it starts flashing and telling me that the track is about to end right here. Um, and whether I have loop playing on the deck. I have that control. Needle lock is for when I'm playing back. So let's go back to my main view here. If I want to find a position, you can see how it says pause, playback, 
or pause playback to enable. So if I want to move around, I actually have to stop the deck and then tap to find whatever position I want. Um, but if I wanted to jump around and not have that give me the warning, then I can change that with my needle lock. So there's my needle lock off, and now I'll go back to that main screen here, press play, and now I can hop around without having to pause the deck. So let's hold that down again, and then go back to the screen. Um, and then I have padlock as well. So same sort of idea, but just with the pads. So I won't be able to hit the pads if the track is playing back, but I like to have that off because I like to jump around the track a bunch. I then have my library and how things are going to be filtered. So I can either select my keys by sharps, sharps, flats, open key or Camelot. Um, I like Camelot because it's a quick reference. I don't know the key value when I do it that way. Uh, if I'm playing back my instrumentation, I'll switch it out to be either open key, sharps, or flats, just so that I can look down and see exactly what note value I'm in when I play my instrument. The key filter, um, so anything that matches or is compatible, I get that option. And then I get my filter ranges. So I can say, like, hey, I want to go from anything from 78 to 155. And I have some options inside of there, too. Um, also, the tolerance of BPM filter, too. So if I'm matching stuff up and it's going to be organized together, um, how large that range is. And then show only file name. I have that off because I like to see all the information. And then below that, I get my deck layer colors uh, so I can change whatever the decks are set to. And you'll notice that both the SC5000 and the X1800 are going to change based upon how I set these. So if I want my layer B to switch to orange, there we go. And then I can have four players plugged in simultaneously, all connected with Ethernet. And so I can set my different player colors right there. Let's go back up to the top and then I'll hit on this tab for utility and now I get a bunch of other options. So right now I have player number, this is number one, and I have the option to have layer B. So I can do two layers simultaneously. I have the screen brightness, so if the club is really dark and I don't want to be blinding myself, I can turn that down. I then have my firmware um, information, what the model is, all this good stuff, and the ability to update my firmware. When I update the firmware, I go USB into my computer. I plug in both the computer and the SC5000, and I just press the update and launch the download that I've done on my computer, and everything is now working together. The SC5000 is a deep piece. I can use it right away, and if I don't have any knowledge about how it works, I can sort of look at it and use it instantly, but then if I want to use it as my tool, I can dig in quite deeply and utilize it fully. Please subscribe to my channel. Please like my videos. If you have any questions, please leave them below in the comment section. Thanks for checking out the channel and the videos. Um, over the next little while, I'm going to do a bunch more MPC videos too. So I'm going to have a bunch of new content showing some things that are a direct response to the comments that were left below. If you want to see anything covered in the SC5000X1800 world that I didn't in this series, please make a comment. I'll happily talk about that. Thanks a lot for watching my videos and stay tuned for more.